Security Level 2, Item Number, SCP-6039, Object Class, Uncontained. Special Containment Protocols. Direct containment of SCP-6039 is unfeasible. Public media pertaining to the existence of SCP-6039 are to be expunged by Foundation web crawlers, and civilian witnesses are likewise amnesticized. Due to the age demographic SCP-6039 targets, no further procedures are necessary for those who claim regarding SCP-6039 activity. Update. Attempts at establishing communication with SCP-6039 is currently pending. Description. SCP-6039 designates an animate stuffed bear, exhibiting signs of sentience, sapience, and an average level of intelligence. Measuring to a height of around 45 centimeters, it is brown in coloration and wears a bow tie around its neck. The entity is capable of transporting itself from one location to another almost instantaneously. SCP-6039 typically presents itself within the proximity of a child, age 12 or younger, when they are alone and currently sustaining an injury or ailment of some form. Upon manifestation, it entertains the subject via performing various activities including, but not limited to, dancing, puppeteering, gymnastics, physical stunts. The motive behind SCP-6039's actions, if any exists, is unclear. Following an inconsistent amount of time, it demanifests. When an adult human interferes with SCP-6039's performance, it immediately disappears. It can be captured on film, however, as the specimen is seemingly unaware of any nearby cameras implemented within the area. See Discovery Log. To date, SCP-6039 has not been reported to manifest in the vicinity of an individual outside its target demographic. Note, see update for more details. Addenda Materials Discovery Log SCP-6039 was initially brought to Foundation attention following the dissemination of a home security video on the social media platform Facebook, consisting of SCP-6039 playfully interacting with three-year-old Daisy Newston, the daughter of Audrey and Jeffrey Newston. The film was taken down shortly after, and all involved civilians were amnesticized. A copy of the aforementioned video is attached below for the sake of debriefing. More footage regarding SCP-6039 is available upon request. Security Cam Footage Begin Log Note, Daisy had a minor cut on her left leg at the time of recording. Daisy is seen sitting and constantly interacting with the various alphabet blocks laid across the living room carpet. As she attempts to place a block within her mouth, removing her pacifier, SCP-6039 manifests in the arm of a couch following a sudden burst of light. This does not alert Daisy, however, as she has her back turned to the entity. SCP-6039 performs a cartwheel towards her line of sight, which manages to grab her attention. She places down the block from her mouth on the floor while staring intently. SCP-6039 silently waves at Daisy. She does not respond. After a brief moment of silence, SCP-6039 reaches and takes out two crudely decorated sock puppets from behind self, resembling Audrey and Jeffrey Newston. It is uncertain where SCP-6039 had placed these puppets. SCP-6039 proceeds to do a performance using the sock puppets. Throughout the recording, SCP-6039 can be seen walking hastily to other spots within the living room area. Daisy is seen occasionally laughing and clapping during the specimen's play. Following the cessation of SCP-6039's performance, it returns to its previous position. It then bows and waves again. Daisy proceeds to stand up and approach SCP-6039 before briefly embracing it. The anomaly does not react to this. Afterward, 
she takes a step back before tumbling down, where an SCP-1639 abruptly demanifests. A short pause ensues before Daisy returns to her position during the beginning of the footage. End log. It is undetermined how long SCP-1639 was active for prior to its discovery by the Foundation, if at all. Appearance Log Below is a sample of SCP-6039 manifestations, a full list which is available upon request. Sample Log 6039 Subject Event Description Matthew Porsche 6 Sustaining a mild cut on his right index finger. SCP-6039 takes out a miniature sock puppet resembling Matthew and places it on the subject's injured finger. SCP-6039 then presents him with a miniature puppet of itself and the two proceed to interact with one another using the toys. Jesse Steinfield, 8. Undergoing a common code. SCP-6039 is riding a unicycle around Jesse's room for the duration of the footage. The entity bows while Jesse applauds, after which it demanifests. Rudy Hops, H10, suffering from a fractured arm. SCP-1639 takes out a black shopping marker and signs Rudy's cast. It spends the rest of the recording assisting the subject as he cleans his room. Danny Nelson, H12, paralyzed from the hips down. SCP-6039 presents itself in a pirate costume and does a performance with Danny actively engaging in the play using his hand as a puppet. The specimen D manifests on the subject's lap following the show's conclusion. Bethany Goodwill, H12, suffering from leukemia. SCP-6039 is immobile throughout manifestation. Bethany spends the recording coloring the anomaly in her arms. Update on 2021, March 29th. Senior researcher Charles Peterson, head researcher for SCP-6039, had arrived to the facility considerably late, refusing to answer why. He was reported more lethargic and unmotivated than usual, performing poorly in his work as a result. Peterson was also informally dressed and had bags under his eyes, presumably due to a lack of rest. Peterson decided to spend his break room in his office, where he promptly fell asleep undisturbed. Moments later, SCP-6039 had unexpectedly manifested near Peterson, with its subsequent interactions been caught on tape. The recording is as follows. Transcription Log Begin Log Peterson is quietly asleep in his office chair, resting his head atop his desk, stained with a clear liquid, later identified as tears. He holds on to a framed photograph. SCP-6039 manifests off-camera, as noted by the sudden flash of light. After a brief moment, it gradually approaches Peterson from behind, one step at a time. It stares at Peterson's face. Once close enough to Peterson, SCP-6039 proceeds to silently embrace his left leg. Both parties remain in the same position for 23 minutes. After the time period, SCP-6039 lets go, glancing at Peterson's face once more before abruptly demanifesting. Peterson wakes up thereafter. Peterson briefly inspects his left leg before noticing the liquid stain on his desk. He lets out a handkerchief from his pocket and cleans it. Peterson then tidies himself up before exiting his office. End log. Following this, Peterson returned to normal conditions, though noted to have stated that he had felt a warm sensation when prompted regarding the footage above, no further abnormal activities pursued. A brief inspection of Peterson's office revealed a crumbled up note containing a crudely written message. It reads, I'm deeply sorry for you, sir. You must have been devastated. He was quite a wonderful fellow. 
I agree. I thank you heavily for letting me take care of him whenever you're away. And don't worry, despite how time-consuming work can be, I'm sure he still loves you. Be a sitter. Investigation into Peterson's activities outside the Foundation has discovered he had attended a funeral the day before, dedicated to his late son, Nate Peterson, who had recently passed away due to his rapidly declining health at the age of 11. 